Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. I hope and trust everybody had a great 4th of July weekend. I can't tell you how mine was because it hasn't happened yet for me. I'm recording this on Friday going into the weekend. If you see me next week, I guess that means it turned out okay. If I can remember, I'll let you know. But I trust that all of you will have had a great 4th of July weekend by the time you're watching this vlog, which would be Tuesday, July 6th. Now, I feel a little bit, well, not too bad, a little bit because the last vlog I did or the one right before the weekend was a long one. I hadn't intended it to be so long, but it was. I think it was my, it could have been my longest vlog except for another one that was longer that I broke into two parts. This one may be long too because it's an important subject to me and I have to quote from several articles and then I have to give you my comments in between and at the end. I'll try to save them for the end, but we'll have to see what happens. And so, well, no, wait, before we get into the subject, full disclosure, actually two full disclosures today. Disclosure number one, I'm a conservative. Always keep that in mind when you evaluate whatever I say. But second uh, disclosure, I'm a Jew. Keep that in mind because I'm going to be talking about anti-Semitism today. Anti-Semitism and my friends on the left, our friends on the left, Democrats' failure to speak up against it. Or if they do, there's always a qualifier that I'll get to in a moment or by the end of the vlog. But uh, let's get right into these headlines and, and the quotes. So uh, I want to try to make it as brief as I can, which may not be that brief today. First headline, Jews are top target for hate crimes in U.S. FBI data shows. New data analysis of the just released FBI hate crime statistics uncovers a disturbing trend in the United States. Jews are at least three times more likely to experience a hate crime in America than any other ethnic group, and that includes Muslims. I'm going to get to that specifically as we go along at some point. The Federal Bureau of Investigation recently released its hate crime statistics report highlighting troubling trends related to hate crimes against Jews. According to the report, Jewish people were the target of over 60% of religious bias related hate crimes. Jews were targeted at significantly higher rates than any other religious group. These data indicate an increase of 41% since 2015. Over the past decade, hate crimes targeting Jews topped the charts every year, with rates ranging from 52% to 67% of the total religious bias crimes. While prominent Jewish organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League have expressed grave concerns over this latest report, a more concerning reality is apparent. The FBI does not include crimes targeting Jewish people under the racial, ethnicity, or ancestry bias categories, but only as a religious group. This singular perception of Jewish identity is a misconception. All Jews, Orthodox Jews on one end of the religious spectrum and completely secular Jews on the other end, share a long and vibrant history, culture, and heritage. We are a people of distinct ethnic background and are persecuted as such. And, and that really matters because, well, take myself. I am not very religious. You could almost call me a secular Jew. I'm not a a secular Jew, but you can be an atheist. You can be an atheist and still be Jewish. Jews who are being targeted, some are targeted because they're wearing their religious symbols, but others, like me, I guess, just because we quote-unquote look Jewish, uh, religions don't have a, a look. And that is the same as attacking somebody who is, is Italian or Indian or something else. Just by looking at them, you're not talking about religion. 
because that Jew, that guy who looks Jewish that you attack, he could be an atheist. So that's what really bothers me, but uh, I don't want to spend any more time on that part of the, my objection. What I object to is the anti-Semitism and the uh, failure of Democrats to uh, speak out against it, uh, unless they do it in a certain way, which I'm going to get to in a moment. But let's go on with the stories here. Here's another one. I just want to give you some quick stories. These are just examples. I'll give you two or three. Chabad rabbi stabbed eight times in Boston. Chabad is orthodox, in case you're wondering. Very religious, very orthodox Jew. So we're talking about that spectrum of Judaism. I'm closer to the other end, the, the secular end, though I'm not secular, but uh, I'm not very religious. But we're all one people. We're all Jews. I, I, I just couldn't resist just emphasizing that again. A rabbi affiliated with the Chabad Lubavitch movement was stabbed multiple times outside of a Jewish school in Boston on Thursday, the Chabad movement announced. Rabbi Shlomo Naginsky, who works as a teacher at the Shelo House Jewish Day School, was sitting outside the institution when he was approached by a man brandishing a gun. The man demanded that Naginsky take him to his car. When Nojinsky attempted to flee, the man stabbed him eight times. So uh, I guess in a way he's lucky he could have been shot. The perpetrator was arrested by police shortly after he left the scene. A statement from the police said Khaled Awad, 24, will be charged with assault and battery with a deadly weapon. Progressive lawmakers, this is the important part, progressive lawmakers of the so-called, quote, squad, unquote, Ilhan Omar, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and Rashida Tlaib did not mention or condemn the attack on their social media accounts. This is what I'm talking about. Representative Ayanna Presley, another squad member who serves as the representative for much of Boston, said on Twitter that she was, quote, praying for Rabbi Naginsky and his family. Anti-Semitism is a clear and persistent threat to our communities, unquote, she wrote. Her statement drew ire from Twitter users who said her vocal criticism of the Israeli government during the May 2021 conflict with Gaza fostered an anti-Semitic atmosphere in which attacks against Jews have Spike. Her rhetoric, her other rhetoric, betrays what she just wrote in this, uh, this social media post. I'm sure it's because she represents Boston where the attack occurred. Probably uh, she has to depend on Jews to get reelected. But I, I don't think she's very sincere, personally. Next story, Yale student government condemns Israel for, quote, genocide, unquote. The Yale College Council on Sunday adopted a resolution condemning Israel for committing, quote, human rights violations, unquote. The student leaders passed the, quote, statement of condemnation, unquote, a joint resolution with Yale's Middle Eastern and North African Cultural Center, Yale's for Palestine, and the Arab Students Association after weeks of opposition from Jewish students. The measure denounces, quote, injustice, genocide, and ethnic cleansing occurring in Palestine, unquote quote, and claims Israel is an, quote, apartheid, unquote, state. The measure comes a month and a half after Hamas terrorists in the Gaza Strip launched more than 4,000 rockets into Israel over an 11-day span. The resolution criticized the Israeli military's counterstrikes, which neutralized several Hamas weapon stores and leaders. The statement did not mention Hamas's assault. The Joseph Slifka Center for Jewish Life at Yale, 
released a statement hours after the student government adopted the resolution. The Slivka Center said the council's measure contributed to creating an unsafe environment for Jewish students. The resolution is the latest statement from students at U.S. universities to condemn Israel over the Hamas attacks. The University of Michigan's central student government and the undergraduate student government at the University of Chicago both use the recent conflict to endorse the anti-Semitic boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, which seeks to punish Israel through economic measures. It's also known as BDS by its initials. Well, this is a, an example of many of the double standard Hamas starts a war, launches 4,000 rockets, and these liberal student groups uh, associated with, uh, you know, Middle Eastern, North African culture, uh, uh, so on, cultural center, so on and so forth, condemn Israel, and they ignore these attacks. And again, on the, the false assumption that the Arabs, the Palestinians, are quote-unquote people of color. A lot of Jews are darker. Uh, if we're going by color, I assume they're going by color because they, their watchword or their phrase, their meme, people of color. A lot of Israeli Jews, Ethiopian Jews, are darker, much darker than Palestinian Arabs. Uh, a recent, was it the Miss Universe? There was some uh, contest, world beauty contest, and the uh, Israeli contestant was black, was an Ethiopian Jew. Just another example of that, we're talking anti-Semitism here. They don't care about the facts. And then I'll also jump in this idea of apartheid. Arab Israelis decided the most recent Israeli election. The two parties, or the left and the right, were very close parliamentary system. They, they didn't have enough seats to form a government they were very close, but they didn't have enough seats without the Arab party, and they both courted the Arab parties to, it's a coalition of several Arab parties, they, they courted them, they, they openly courted them to get their support, and it was actually the left that, that won their support. But you see the ignorance here because, well, they don't know, and furthermore, they don't want to know. They just want to hate on Israel. Nation's largest teachers union will debate resolution accusing Israel of, quote, ethnic cleansing, unquote, which is another anti-Semitic lie. The nation's largest teachers union will debate two resolutions aimed at boycotting Israel and recognizing a Palestinian state at a conference this week. The whole point of the Oslo Accords was to negotiate a solution or uh, to the quote-unquote Palestinian issue, the point being that the formation of a Palestinian state would come only through negotiations. But you have these liberal groups who want to recognize and actually do recognize a Palestinian state before the fact, which just enables the Palestinians to dig in their heels more because their goal is not a Palestinian state living in peace next to a Jewish state. Their goal is to destroy Israel, to replace Israel, to create a 22nd or 23rd Muslim majority state between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. So why should they talk uh, these resolutions to recognize a Palestinian state? It just gives them hope to hold on. They cling to this fantasy of destroying Israel and replacing Israel. But these liberals, they don't care. They don't care because they hate Israel that much. If you want to know when there will be peace in the, uh, well, between, there's already peace just uh, exploding all over the Middle East, the Abraham Accords. If you really want peace in the Middle East, make peace with all the other Arab nations, Muslim states, and take care of the Palestinian, the so-called Palestinian issue last. But uh, they don't see it that way. So uh, as I was about to say, if you want peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis, what's important is for the 
West, because this will be a future vlog, this is really a Western project. The Middle Eastern Arabs understand the, well, they're done with the, the Palestinians, just put it that way. This is a Western European and American liberal project to keep this issue alive so the peace between the two sides will come when these people in the West, these liberals, care more for the Palestinians than they hate Israel. And I won't hold my breath. Back to the article. The National Education Association will take up the proposals at their multi-day annual meeting. One measure calls on the United States to cut material support and funding to Israel. Another would have the union promote Palestinian causes through a variety of programs at an estimated cost of $71,000. $500. So they want to cut all uh, funding and support for Israel being uh, attacked by well, most, most recently 4,000 rockets. And they want to spend $71,500 to send to the, the people firing the rockets. And, and that's just brilliant logic. Teachers unions across the country have come out against Israel and Jews in recent months. And that's important. Israel and Jews. Because, well, for instance, I am not Israeli, I'm American. Three local unions affiliated with the American Federation of Teachers, the country's second largest teachers union, passed statements in June condemning Israel as an apartheid state. That, that apartheid state lie, again. Federation President Randy Weingarten criticized Jews as being, quote, part of the ownership class, unquote, dedicated to denying opportunities to others in an interview earlier this year. And there we go, uh, another uh, anti-Semitic trope, Jews own everything. I own a, a condo in Tennessee, that, that's what I own. But shame on Randy Weingarten, she's a Jew, and but she's a liberal Jew, so that's what I mean. She, she has to go along with the program uh, and uh, shame on her. That, that's all I can say about that. More than 50 members of the National Education Association co-sponsored item 29, which says, quote, the Arab population of Palestine has again risen up in a heroic struggle against military repression and, quote, ethnic cleansing, unquote, by the Israeli state and extreme nationalist forces in Israeli society, unquote. Quote, again, no, 98% of the Palestinians are governed by the Palestinians. The Israelis are not in Gaza at all. And in uh, Judea and Samaria, the Oslo Accords that the Arabs signed, that the Palestinians signed, Yasser Arafat signed, divides those two areas into the former Jewish provinces, the, the Kingdom of Israel, divided into three sections. The Israelis control so-called Area C. They can do whatever they want, Area C. There is another area, Area B, that is jointly controlled. And Area A, where most of the Palestinians are, that's controlled completely by Palestinians. It's the Palestinian Authority that's rounding up uh, journalists, for example, and, and putting them in prison and torturing them. It's Gaza, uh, Hamas, that's rounding up and uh, torturing, quote-unquote, enemies of, uh, I guess, the Gaza Strip, executing them for, quote-unquote, collaborating with Israel, summary, uh, just executions, no, uh, you know, justice or uh, system of justice over there. The Israelis are not in Gaza at all, and they rarely go into area... A, which is controlled by the Palestinians. A Palestinian security force is cooperating with the Israelis for a very obvious reason, because if the Israelis, this is the irony and this is the hypocrisy, they won't say publicly the Palestinian uh, authority, the Palestinian dictators, which is what they are. The Palestinian authority knows very well that if the Israelis were not there helping with security, 
that Hamas would take over that area. Uh, Hamas would take over, would, well, if they were lucky, the members of the Palestinian Authority would just be exiled, but most likely they would be executed. Certainly uh, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, it would be his death warrant. So they want the Israelis there. Uh, they just can't say so publicly, but our liberal friends in the United States should know that. New business item 51 calls for the union to, quote, recognize the existence and sovereignty of Palestine and Palestinian children and families and their human right to access a quality education and live freely as outlined in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, unquote, which is another interesting example of hypocrisy because certain members of the European Union is pressuring the leadership to stop funding education, stop funding the schools in the Palestinian areas because the Palestinian textbooks teach, uh, they preach, never mind, teach, they preach teach and preach anti-Semitism and the killing of Jews. That's the kind of education that these, uh, this union is calling for. That's what they really are calling for. And again, the Israelis, well, if the Israelis were controlling the area, such textbooks would not exist. Never mind the textbooks, they would replace the teachers with, uh, I would expect, Israeli Arab teachers, and they would replace the textbooks, but they don't. The Palestinians teach hate, anti-Semitism, and the Israelis let them do it. Again, something that our liberal friends ignore. Teachers unions are not alone in condemning Israel. Student governments at the University of Michigan, the University of Chicago, and Yale University passed resolutions that criticized Israel for defending itself from an 11-day Hamas strike in May, as I, I mentioned earlier. All of the statements referred to all, all of the statements referred to Israel as an, quote, apartheid, unquote, state. Although Jewish and Muslim Israelis and Arabs are members of the Israeli government. As I just mentioned also earlier, they, the Arab Israelis, decided the most recent election. Also, there is an Arab Israeli justice on the Israeli High Court, which is the equivalent of our Supreme Court. I, I understand this could be starting to sound tedious. I, I'm sorry if this is boring you, or, but I, I have to get this all out. And this next item, and it looks like we're kind of getting near the end, if I can offer a little encouragement in that respect, but you Jewish Democrats, you Jewish Democrats need to pay special attention to this story because this is a major part of the large point that I want to make today. World's leading children's book authors group apologizes, apologizes over condemnation of anti-Semitism. In other words, they condemned anti-Semitism and then they apologized for having condemned anti-Semitism. We're not talking about just not condemning anti-Semitism. We're talking about condemning anti-Semitism and then apologizing over it. And wait till you hear the logic. Uh, there, well, let's just, here we go. The only worldwide, so it's not just the United States, the only worldwide professional organization for children's book authors and illustrators, these would be the people who are writing and illustrating the books that your kids are reading, okay? The only worldwide professional organization for children's book authors and illustrators issued a fervent, a fervent apology to Muslim and Palestinian members over a recent condemnation of anti-Semitism that did not discuss Islamophobia and announced the resignation, announced the resignation of the diversity offer who had posted the message. The Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, SCBWI, has over 22,000 members in the U.S. and around the world. Its members include such prominent writers as Judy Bloom, uh, who serves on its board of advisors. I assume that Judy Bloom is a prominent children's book author. 
I don't know. I assume that. The original SCBWI statement on anti-Semitism published on June 10th acknowledged that Jews, quote, have the right to life, safety, and freedom from scapegoating and fear, unquote. Noting the recent precipitous rise, I quoted you the FBI figures at the beginning of this vlog, 60% recently, and three times as much as any other uh, group, religious or, or ethnic. Noting the recent precipitous rise in anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic violence, the statement said, quote, silence is often mistaken for acceptance and results in the perpetration of more hatred and violence against different types of people. As writers, illustrators, and translators of children's literature, we are responsible for promoting promoting equity and humanizing people in our work, all children and all families, unquote, the group said. But on Sunday, SCBWI Executive Director Lynn Oliver issued an apology saying, and I don't see what was wrong with that statement. It condemns anti-Semitism. And then it actually does mention the, the larger sense, uh, you know, anti-anybody. But on Sunday, SCBWI Executive Director Lynn Oliver issued an apology saying, quote, I would like to apologize to everyone in the Palestinian community who felt unrepresented, silenced, or marginalized. SCBWI acknowledges the pain our actions have caused to our Muslim and Palestinian members and hope that we can heal from this moment, unquote. But keep waiting because there's even more. The message included an apology from Powers herself, who said she had erred in removing, quote, anti-Palestinian and anti-Israeli posts. I neglected to address the rise in Islamophobia and deeply regret that omission. As someone who is vehemently against Islamophobia and hate speech of any kind, I understand that in intention is not impact, and I am so sorry. Well, this doesn't fix the pain and disappointment that you feel by my mishandling of this moment. I hope you will accept my sincerest apologies and resignation from the SCBWI. I wish all of you success in your work because the world's children need your stories all of them, unquote. This is the point that I'm making. I think you will have trouble finding an example where somebody condemns Islamophobia and then jumps in to condemn anti-Semitism in the same statement, let alone somebody apologizing profusely and resigning if they hold some official uh, position. Uh, apologizing profusely and then resigning for having failed to mention or to condemn anti-Semitism after condemning Islamophobia. But you see this pattern over and over and over again. It happened with Ilhan Omar, wh whom I'm going to get to in a moment. That will be my final, uh, the final part of this vlog today. But that is a pattern that you see all the time. And with Ilhan Omar, she made a number of anti-Semitic statements. The House was originally going to pass a resolution condemning her specifically, censuring her and condemning anti-Semitism. But by the time they were done, after the protests from the liberal wing of the party, which is pretty much the whole party these days, it was watered down to just a general statement against hate. And that is one of my major points. Our democratic friends, the liberals, especially on the far left, cannot condemn anti-Semitism outright. Full stop. Never mind that Jews are being attacked at three times the rate of any other ethnic or religious group. In the most recent uh, statistics, they were 60% of the, the attacks. 60% of, I don't know the total number of groups being attacked, ethnicities, uh, religions being attacked, but 
the more there are, the more significant that figure then becomes Jews being 60% of all the attacks. And there was one year, at least one year in the statistics that I cited earlier, where Jews were 67% of the attacks. Nevertheless, in spite of all that, our liberal friends on the left, the Democrats, the liberal Democrats, apparently cannot condemn anti-Semitism without including a condemnation of at least one other group or just a, a condemnation of hate. They cannot condemn anti-Semitism. And I am sure the reason is because of members of the party such as Ilhan Omar. Now, I won't deny there are anti-Semites in the Republican Party, uh, such a large party, there has to be, but we don't need their votes, we conservatives. They aren't very many, but they are such a large part of the Democratic Party these days that Democrats, good Democrats, I'll use that term, good Democrats, uh, Democrats of goodwill, they're afraid to condemn them because they're afraid if they condemn them, then they will lose their voting base, which is most of the party, I sincerely believe these days. And then the, the, the Republicans would win. So they let this go. And it is really shameful that, I mean, there are liberals such as Alan Dershowitz, who comes right out and condemns the anti-Semitism, and he condemns the Jewish Democrats who will not speak out against that. And there's an interesting point to really drive that home that I'll get to in a moment. But first, here is the amazing, wonderful, fantastic Kaylee McEnany, whom I praised numerous times in the past when she was the press secretary for Donald Trump. Here's just a, a very short clip, a video clip of Kaylee McEnany speaking to this very issue. Another great question raised by the Republican Jewish Coalition, we can pop it up on the screen. Uh, they said this, will uh, U.S. Jewish Dems join us in calling out Ilhan Omar for saying Jewish members of Congress aren't partners in justice? Or is the JDCA and Hallie Sofire going to show us all once again that they are frauds? Good question, Emily. Welcome back. And I suspect that some of you, maybe many of you, maybe all of you will be happy to learn that this is the last item for today. It's a little bit lengthy, but it is the last item. It's a suitable coda, I believe, to what I've been talking about in this vlog. I had been talking in general terms most of the vlog. Now I want to focus on a specific example, somebody I've mentioned a couple of times earlier, Ilhan Omar, and how it relates to what I'm talking about. So here is the headline. Why are liberal Jews still covering for Ilhan Omar? The interesting thing about Representative Ilhan Omar, Democrat of Minnesota, isn't that she can't stop trolling American Jews, the pro-Israel community, and even her Jewish colleagues in the House Democratic Caucus. Omar has demonstrated again and again that she is a dedicated ideologue who is committed to anti-Zionist politics and never shy about employing anti-Semitic tropes to advance that cause. The really interesting thing about her is why so many liberal Jews, Jewish organizations, and even Jewish members of Congress are not only afraid to stand up to her, but often bend over backwards to rationalize or justify her outrageous behavior. Every new instance of Omar's trolling of the Jews follows a familiar pattern. She generates outrage by saying something offensive, seems to retreat when she gets pushed back, but then almost immediately turns around and doubles down on her original comments and then counterattacks, depicting herself as a victim. It played out this week, only weeks ago, when after falsely denouncing Israeli measures of self-defense against Hamas terrorism and damning it as, damning Israel, she means, as an, quote, apartheid state, unquote, she went on to make a specious comparison between both Israel and the United States. 
see, and the United States to Palestinian terrorists and the Taliban. After receiving criticism, including from a dozen Jewish Democrats who called on her to, quote, clarify, unquote, not renounce, not apologize, just clarify remarks without actually, without actually condemning her, she appeared, appeared to back down, saying she had been taken out of context, giving Democratic leaders like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi the opening needed to declare the controversy over. Yet, given an opportunity to try to conciliate her critics when asked about the most recent dust-up in an interview with Jake Tapper, who is Jewish, by the way, on CNN, Omar denounced the 12 Jewish Democrats who took a stand against her as people who are not, quote, seeking justice around the world, unquote. But what has to be the most galling for those who are put in her crosshairs is the way so many Jews who identify as, quote, progressives, unquote, and this is my main point, so many Jews who identify as, quote, progressives, unquote, are not only willing to give her a pass, but are actively assisting Omar's campaign against Israel, its supporters, and any Democrat who has the guts to notice what she's doing. For example, not only did Rabbi Jonah Pesner, the head of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, that's the least orthodox branch of Judaism, in case you're wondering. Not only did he have nothing to say about Omar's attacks on Israel and Jews, but he actually endorsed Omar's attempt to co-opt Jewish history in her defense with a fawning tweet. Quote, thank you, Representative Omar, for lifting up this history. We need our communities standing together in the fight for justice and against anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim bigotry, unquote, he wrote. And I trust that at least some of you did not miss that phrase near the end, against anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim bigotry. Another example, and in fairness, now that I remember, I have to exclude those rare liberal Jews, such as Alan Dershowitz, but it seems that most, I would even say almost all, liberal Jews are just incapable of condemning anti-Semitism outright by itself, full stop. They have to include another group, and it's usually Muslims. They cannot condemn anti-Semitism without condemning Islamophobia, uh, to use their term, even though I am not aware of, of Jews attacking uh, Muslims in the United States. But there's more. Nor was the RAC alone. Two Jewish members of the House Democratic Caucus, Representatives Dean Phillips and David Chicolone, also spoke up in her defense, with the latter claiming all the fuss was the work of, quote, right-wingers, unquote, who were, quote, trying to create a controversy where there is none, unquote, which is another favorite trope of the left to uh, blame us, to blame conservatives, to blame the right. It should be remembered that the majority of House Jewish Democrats chose to be silent or actually support Omar rather than join with those who condemned her comparison of Israel to a terrorist group, that would be Hamas. And now pay special attention to this next little nugget. Because compare that with Republican Representative Paul Gosar, who was called out for planning to host a fundraiser with alt-right, anti-Semite, and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes, who has previously been shunned by mainstream conservatives. Like Omar, when she was asked about her, quote, Benjamin slur, unquote, that was uh, her statement or her, her accusation that Jews are buying the loyalty of Republicans and Democrats, too, of representatives in the House and senators buying their loyalty. It, she said, quote, it's all about the Benjamins, unquote. That's what that refers to. So like Omar, when she was asked about her Benjamin slur, Gosar claimed ignorance of who he was dealing with. But the point here, and this is the main point, 
The point here is that Jewish Republicans were quick to condemn Gosar. By contrast, progressives are blinded, both by their partisan aversion to taking on their ideological allies like Omar, but also often effectively silenced by her status as a woman of color. That inability to spurn anyone, no matter how egregious their behavior, who can fit into a race category that denotes, quote, oppressed status, unquote, acts as a permission slip for Jew hatred that Omar is happy to accept. That progressive Jews are still lining up with her tells you everything you need to know about the partisan sickness and ideological madness that is doing such terrible damage to the country's political culture. And I would dispute that. It's damage to the Democratic Party. That's all. To the Democratic Party, what has been called the Corbynization of the Democratic Party because of Jeremy Corbyn, who was the leader of the Labor Party in Britain. Under him, the Labor Party became uh, all but openly anti-Semitic, he was forced to resign. It looks like the same thing, unfortunately, is happening uh, in the Democratic Party. And I just wonder how long uh, Jewish Democrats are going to put up with this, ignore it, and, and just pretend that nothing's happening. So I'll just leave it there. Long vlog, sorry. I know it was a long one, but uh, hopefully I covered everything today. And if you could give me a little more time, I wouldn't mind a thumbs up if you like this video. Share with anybody you think would also like it. Got any comments? Comment section below the video where you can put questions, suggestions for future topics. You could subscribe. I love getting new subscribers. You can visit my other channels, my hot dog recipe channel, my original music channel. And yeah, I said you could subscribe. Did I? Well, you could subscribe. Worth saying twice. I love getting new subscribers. But most of all, I appreciate the time that you spend with me. I really do, especially today, which I think was a lot of time. And I would love to see all of you again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.